Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. So today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things about aquariums, plants. And unfortunately, we're going to be talking about one of the ways in which plants can actually cause a great deal of harm to your aquarium. Now, this is not a common situation. It doesn't happen that often. And you may be thinking that I'm about to tell you a species of plant that is poisonous to your fish. And those exist, uh, putting botanicals or plants that are found in areas where they've been sprayed with pesticides or chemicals, fertilizers, things like that can definitely harm your fish, uh, including live plants. However, today we're not going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about other situations in which plants can actually build up to a point where they can actually suffocate your fish in some cases, they can cause your tank to spike in ammonia and crash, and a number of other things. So we're going to talk about these situations. They may not be very common for most folks because most folks may not keep plants to the extent that I like to in these jungle tanks, but these are real things that come up in the hobby and that I notice going on in my tanks uh, subtly right now and I wanted to share them with you so you can see them before anything catastrophic happens if you're noticing the same thing. Now also today I don't want to talk specifically about the fact that of course these angelfish they need this all trimmed down sometimes twice a week in this tank because plants grow so fast. So the whole idea of fish needing room to swim and be fish <laughs> Uh, of course, that's also there, but that's not necessarily going to kill your fish or uh, cause problems. It may cause them to jump, it may cause them to act differently, and it may cause them to be unhappy. Uh, however, there are many fish that actually want plants so dense that they can barely swim through it because that's where they evolve to have babies. They live in tangled mats of plants. Um, angelfish are not one of those fish, however, I'm just going to say. So let's get into this video and let's talk about these five main situations in which you should watch out for having too many of a certain uh, plant or certain situation going on in your planted tank that can lead to catastrophe. So let's count them down right now and take a look at my other tanks. All right guys, so number one on the list of things to watch out for is having enough surface exchange in your water. So right now, we're getting to a density level of duckweed, especially in the back over here, where there's no other plants disrupting it, where it can actually grow so thick that it can cause aeration problems. Beyond this, it will actually cause your tank to heat up in pockets irregularly. So the light itself, if you have something like a Fluval 3.0, or you have a high-powered light that puts off some heat, a lot of times you'll notice that the water is actually quite a bit hotter right at the surface underneath floating plants than it is deeper in the tank or than it is somewhere else that doesn't have that surface area. But at the same time, if you don't have aeration and heavy flow, so if you have a filterless tank or an under gravel filter that doesn't disturb the surface area, area much or you have some sort of a bog filter or plenum there's all sorts of situations that can cause you to not have enough clear area with gas exchanges going on and if you have a lot of plants and strong light or natural light what can happen is this can become an impervious layer essentially and the gases can remain trapped in higher levels and can't dissolve up out of the water as easily and suddenly you end up with suffocating fish down below. So that is something to watch out for. The remedy for it is pretty simple in that you just need something to agitate the water or remove duckweed from approximately 10 to 20 percent of your water's surface area. But if you have flowing water or a sump below that's open to the air, uh, and getting that exchange, that all works too. But this is by far the most common of the issues I want to talk about. And I've seen it uh, definitely cause more and more problems in very shallow tanks. So in 
uh, old frag tanks and ponds. So I wanted to mention, mention it while we are in tubbing season as well. All right, going on to number two. Now, number two on our list is an odd situation in that you can have a tank that was planted well, the substrate's done well, deep substrate, that's working as a filtration mechanism, snails, and all sorts of other holistic, natural, or low-tech, or no-tech tank mechanisms can be going on. You can also have a hang off the back filter and all sorts of other canister filters and things, sponge filters, and this can still happen. What I'm talking about is when plants grow immersed or they grow too old and there is floating plant cover or just too many layers of plants. Now you can happily layer plants. You can see here there's plenty of layers of plants in this aquarium, but the lowest layer of them is becoming uh, starved of nutrients and especially when you get plants that are up and out of the water they don't need to work against the water to fight for light or gas exchange be that co2 or oxygen and so they put all their energy and their brightness and their flowering and blooming of fruits and flowers and seeds all that is going to the top of the plant and because of that, the bottom of the plant, it will strip of nutrients and sometimes it will even die to the point where the roots will put out feeder roots in these mass balls like this. And it's trying to get nutrients from up here in the water column rather than even though you follow the roots, it's planted in the tank. But it's just trying to get all the nutrients it can and at some point it won't be able to sustain that growth rate if you have good light and good fertilizer and this debris can eventually build up and actually crash your tank cause algae spikes at first but then if your algae can't keep up with it uh, and eat the nitrates nitrites ammonia and ammonium you can end up with all this organic debris building up and rotting in your tank and causing a catastrophic crash the answer is to simply thin it out, trim your plants and don't let them go too crazy, uh, or give them more room at each plant so that it'll uh, have room to breathe and so that you can either put flow in and get rid of these dead leaves and bits and pieces, or you can uh, just allow those gases as well as nutrients to get to each plant and it won't have to die or put out those roots like this and end up just being a ball of rotting material in your tank. So easy enough fixes. Those are gonna be the two most common issues. Now we have three more quick but less common issues I want to address as well. Now a third unusual situation is if you have plants in a tank and suddenly they start not doing well. They're, they're probably missing a certain key nutrients, be it potassium or, or magnesium or zinc or whatever it may be. They're probably missing one key nutrient and they start dying. Well, this can oftentimes cause a major spike in the uh, floating plants if you have those as a backup safety. It can also cause a spike in algae and you can get algae growing on surfaces. Now the same thing is true of plant leaves. So you can get this same uh, Claudifora or Claudifera algae as well as Marimo algae and Blackbeard algae growing on surfaces. A lot of people will think this is unsightly and they'll see their plants aren't doing well so they'll either trim them heavily and then they'll try to get rid of the algae with either something that kills algae or something that is actually removing the algae. And algae is there as your protector. It is there to say there's too much of the nutrients in the water that your plants aren't using. I'm going to help them out. So when you start seeing these little holes and things, you can actually get a head jump start on preventing the algae and things if you don't want it. But in some tanks, like this one, I actually like the look of the algae on the wood and so forth. And when you start seeing the plants going downhill, the answer is not to cut all that material out necessarily, unless it's truly dead. Then you can get rid of it because it's just going to turn into organic matter. But if it's still alive and well, uh, leave it be 
and snails will generally only eat the dying material. So this tank is going to be safe. But if you take out the live material as well as add some chemical that kills algae or you've got a bloom of algae in the water, suddenly you don't have that backup or dual redundancy system and your ammonia, your nitrates or nitrites can all spike up. And if you don't have a robust enough filtration system, which I've got mine pulled up and kind of pulled apart so you can see I've got a hang off the back in here, uh, it can cause a tank to catastrophically fail and have a nitrogen spike or ammonia spike and then crash. So that's number three. Now number four is even less common, but it does happen. So let's talk about that. Now number four comes into play and here you can see a tank where this failed while I was out of town and in Florida for three weeks. And what happened was this was a tank that had a full carpeted scape. And now snails are being born at a crazy rate, which is sort of good for a while. They're being born at a crazy rate in order to eat all of those uh, plant materials that are sitting in the substrate. Also, you can see fungi is starting to grow on the substrate because there's just sheer too much biological material. What needs to be done here is a big water change and a gravel vacuuming or removing yet again of any sort of debris from plants that died. Now for this one, this one died because CO2 was off, natural light was coming in the window at crazy hours, and algae was not able to grow in this tank because it was completely under control. So you only see a little bit of diatom algae on the glass. And so the carpeting plants that were chugging along, eating up all those nutrients and keeping things safe, failed and they melted away and once they started melting it started a chain reaction and this is when any dense plant in your tank if you have it doing a carpeting uh, type thing for instance dwarf hair grasses or Monte Carlo or baby tears things like this if it all starts failing and dying all of a sudden, that can cause a huge spike of ammonia. And one major place where I've seen this happen is when people buy seeds online, plant them in the substrate, they, they grow dense and great, but they're not true aquatic plants or seeds. So they grow for a few months, they look like a great carpet, and then they crash, they melt, and the tank crashes if you don't take all of the dead and dying debris out like we just mentioned. Now the last issue is with plants that are not true aquatic plants, like ribbon plant, like spider plant, purple waffle plant, or any number of plants that oftentimes you'll see at the big box fish stores that are not true aquatic plants meant to be submerged. Now those plants can all do well in things like pothos and other plants, ferns and uh, all sorts of uh, pennyworts and things, they can be great if they're sucking up the nitrates and nitrates out of the water with their roots and then the plant is above water. However, if you fully submerge it, yet again, you can end up with plants that are dying and big plants and they can die quick and that can spike and cause terrible things to occur in your aquarium. So you wanna get that plant out of there as soon as you realize it is not a true aquatic plant. And always double check the species before you start using them in a fully submerged way because it really can turn things bad quickly. So that is our list of things that I think are not always talked about and that people should keep an eye out for in their aquariums, especially really planted aquariums. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's talk, and if you guys enjoy the channel and the content, you know what to do. If you want to be a member, get more behind-the-scenes access and info, you can do so. It's only $1.99, and it really helps make all this content I put out. Have a great day. Take care of your critters, your plants, and yourself, or you can't do any of that, and I hope you have a great week. Bye.